Holy Gospel according to St. Luke's, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the, Lord, then the devil took him to Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated, and I want any children who are here this morning to come on up front here with me. And when you come forward, I want you to remain standing because we're going to go on a little bit of a field trip this morning. And so come on forward. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. All right, good. All right, excellent. This is your chance to stand up and look at everybody in the congregation. See? Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to be together. Anyone else want to come and join us? You probably will by the time we're done. So, um, but feel free to join us later. Let's not sit on the altar rail, though, guys. Let's stand. Let's stand in a circle right up around here. All right, good. Does everybody know what it means to make a promise? Yeah. Do you sometimes, when you make promises, do you sometimes have like a saying that goes with that? What kind of sayings do you have that go with making a promise? Oh, you actually kept your promise. That's awesome. Does anybody else? Olivia, please, off the rail. Does anybody else have things? Like, when you, when you talk about promises, does anybody say something like, when I was little, we used to say, I cross my heart and hope to die. Does anyone ever say that? You're like, no, that's weird. <laughs> and then we followed that up. Here's what's really even weirder. We followed that up by saying, and stick a needle in my eye. Yeah, sounds really awesome, doesn't it? But think about that. When you're making a promise, you're like, hey, if this is the promise that I'm making to people, I never want to stick a needle in my eye, right? So I'm going to keep my promise. But you know what happens when we make promises, and you are like the only kid I've ever known to have a really good example right off the bat. What do we usually do when we make promises? Like if we promise our mom and dad, we say, I promise I will, I will clean my room if I can watch TV. Do we usually clean our room right away? Not right away, right, exactly. It's like, no, I'm going to find 12 other things to do ahead of time. But you know what? Here, let's go. We're going to go on our field trip part now. So I want you to walk with me over here. Everybody walk over here. Yep, we might pick up some friends along the way. Does everybody know what this is? What is this? It's a baptizing thingy, exactly. That's the official name for it. And at this baptizing thingy, I bet a lot of you were baptized, right? right here at this very one. And we call this a baptismal font, and it's a bowl that has water in it. And if you want to dip your fingers in the water for just a second, you can do that. Don't play with the rocks in the bottom, though. All right? Oh, you can't quite reach here. Let me help you. All right, dip your fingers in. Nice, cool water. Yep. All right. Do you want to touch the water, too? And you know what happened? Here we go. All the way up. Dip your fingers in the water. You know what happened in that water? God makes a promise to each one of you and says, 
I will always watch over you. I will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And also in, this, in the time of this water, the people of this church, all of these people sitting around you here and, and others who might have been here that day, they said, you know what? We're going to make a promise too, and we're going to watch over you and help you raise up in your faith. And so because of this baptismal water promise, God says, I will always watch over you. And the, the promise of all of these people, here, let's go on another step on our, on our uh, field trip. We're going to walk over there kind of. So we have to go back up to the front. Because of this promise that we all made, all right, let's walk this way. And we all said as a church, we said, you know what? Kids are important to us. And we said, you know what? Because we think you guys are important, but we also think really little ones are important. We created this whole space here as a space where really little kids can come and, pl and, and worship. And they can kind of play while they worship. Because you know what? You guys probably all remember this, right? When your hands are busy doing something, you can pay a lot better attention, right? So you can hear what's going on in worship when you're here. And so this is a great place for us as older kids to be able to say, hey, I know what gets done over there. I know that hands stay busy and bodies get to wiggle a little bit so that they can pay attention. And this is a promise that we as the church make to all of you and all of the kids who are yet to come that we say, you're important to us, you're special to us, and, and we want you to be here and be part of what we do. All right, let's take, our, let's take our field trip back up front, everybody. All right. We're going to go by the, we're going to go right up here past the tree of good and evil. And, it, and we're going to walk really carefully this way. Okay, there's a step here, and there's a step here. Come on up, you can do it. You can walk all the way up. All right. And then at this table, God promises something else to us, right? And God says, these are my gifts of forgiveness. And I will offer you the gifts of forgiveness every time you come together and worship me. And so around this table, we talk about the gifts of Holy Communion and how we're blessed in the midst of that. All right, everybody come back down in front now. All right? And here's the thing. All right, everybody sit where you can see me now. So here's the thing. You know how I talked about how when I was little, we would say, cross my heart and hope to die? Well, God doesn't even have to say that. God just says, you know what? I'm going to make you a promise, and I am going to keep my promise, that you will always be my child no matter what you do. No matter what happens in this world, I will always watch over you, I will always care for you, and I will always be with you. And that is the most important promise that has ever been made to any one of us. And that's a promise that we can keep in our hearts. So as we, as we talk a little bit more here in worship, I want you to listen to all the ways that God reminds us of that promise and makes that promise to us, okay? So let's say a word of prayer before we head back to our seats. All right, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for making promises and keeping them. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody together says, Amen. Awesome. Good job. You guys can head back to your seats. Bye. And as they're heading back to our, their seats, so we find ourselves in this beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis and this promise that God makes. And in the midst of the promise that God makes, we find Adam and Eve, who are these people who are just like us. They've got everything they could ever want and more. Except for the one thing that God says, in the middle of the garden, there's this tree. And in that tree, it's, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't want you to eat from that one tree, but everything else you get to have. And human na nature, being what it is, starting all the way back with creation says, you know what? The one thing we want is what's in that tree. We always want that one more thing. We want just a little bit more than what we've been given and what we've been granted. And it would have been really easy, I think, at least from my human perspective, for God to look at us and say, you know what? Forget it. It's not worth it. These human beings, they can't follow one simple instruction. They can't do the one thing that I've asked them, which is to, to not eat of that tree. But you know what God does? 
God's infinite wisdom, God says, you know what? I'm going to walk with these people anyway. I'm going to make a promise to them and care for them, and I'm going to keep my promise. And so the promise that I made where I said to Adam and Eve and and to all of their descendants, I'm going to keep that promise that I'm going to care for them and watch over them at all times and in all places. And God does this, and we say, why would God do that? And the reality is because that's who God is. God makes promises and God keeps promises. And God makes promises not because it makes God feel good and not because it somehow does something good for God and makes God say, oh, well, I am the best God that there is because I keep my promises. But it's just who God is in the nature and the being and the very essence of God. And God promises to follow with people and to walk with people in all kinds of circumstances. And as we read through the Old Testament, we have this continuing cycle of people who are in God's trust and in God's care, who feel the presence of God all around them, who know that everything is provided for them, And yet they get to a point where they say, we want something a little bit more. And they turn their backs on God and they say, we can do this on our own. We've got it figured out. God, we've got this. We don't need you anymore. And they turn their backs on God. And then they recognize that, oh, things aren't going quite as well as we hoped they would. Just like for Adam and Eve in the garden. Things weren't quite going as well as they hoped they would. Because as soon as they ate from that tree, they knew, oh, we're naked. We need clothes. Oh, God's coming, and we did something we weren't supposed to do. We better hide in the woods. We recognize that moment where we have to go back to God, and it happens all the time. And so as we read through the Old Testament, we find these moments where God's people have strayed and that God reinforces that promise. And so in Deuteronomy, we read these words. Words spoken through Moses to the Israelites that are wandering in the wilderness. Do not fear, says God, for I go with you wherever you go. And then as Moses leads his people through the wilderness and comes to the end of his time, the mantle is handed from Moses to Joshua. And Joshua says, I'm not sure I can do this. I don't think I'm really prepared. I don't think I'm ready. And the word that comes to Joshua is the same as it was to Moses. God says, just as I was with Moses, Joshua, I will be with you. And then a little bit later on, we have King David, who is anointing Solomon. And he says, may God's peace be with you just as it has been with me. And the prophet Isaiah reminds his people, I, the Lord your God, will not forsake you or forget you. And then Jesus comes on the scene a while later and tells his disciples, My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, but as only I can give. Jesus reminds his disciples, even as I leave this world, I do not abandon you, but I leave you with the Holy Spirit, one who will be an advocate working with you and walking with you the days of your life. Earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus, talking to a crowd on the side of the hill, says, do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear. Look at the birds of the field. Look at the flowers. Look at the lilies. Has God not taken care of them? And are you of not more value than they are? Then trust that God has got you in this. That God is watching over you. And this promise keeps getting repeated because we as people of God continue to forget about the promise that God makes and that God is consistent in keeping that promise. That God is there in the moments of darkness and in the moments of weakness and in the hardest moments of our lives. Jesus 
coming out of 40 days in the wilderness, comes out hungry, and the devil tempts him with the very thing that all of us would say, now that is the one thing that would be difficult for me. How can you not eat when you are literally starving? And yet Jesus holds to the promise of God and reminds the devil three different times who God is, the promise that God has made, and how we are to respond. The Apostle Paul reminds us in the book of Romans, nothing will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That is a powerful promise. In the face of all that is going on in the world around us, in the face of darkness that we remember from 15 years ago or from 60 years ago, all of these moments in our life where we can say to ourselves, God is not here or God feels distant, we remember the promise that God is holding us and holding us through the darkest times in our lives giving us hope for a future. A future that we may not always be able to see clearly, but God is here present with us. God is here with us in this time and in this place. God is the power that allows us to walk forward when we don't think we can take another step. So when our world does turn dark, when we lose hope, when our enemies are knocking on our door and when fear overtakes us, remember, God promised to care for us, just as God promised to care for Adam and Eve. And even though we break our promises, God, who is the promise maker, 